Hey guys, Tooth Legit City here. Today we're going to be going over some mechanics in the game of Oxygen Included. Dealing with the Research Reactor. Actually, we're going to be talking about a cheese strat. This is something that I do not believe was intended. However, this method does make utilizing the Research Reactor relatively easy, very hassle-free, and of course does not require any intricate builds. Now, of course, we're not going to be talking about the different ways of getting enriched uranium, but of course, you need to be able to have access to this. Usually, you could use the centrifuge right here, the uranium centrifuge, to get the uranium ore that if you guys happen to run into it on your asteroid or another asteroid, you guys can harvest it and bring it back using the centrifuge to create what's called enriched uranium. Of course, you need this in order to utilize the research reactor, and although there's another way of getting it via the betas and the beta hives, you have to run into the betas on the asteroid, and if you happen to not run into them, this is the only other way of getting enriched uranium. Now, of course, that being said, we're not going to go into the different methods of harvesting it. We're really just going to be talking about the research reactor building of itself. Now, of course, this building generates up to 10,000 rads on the tiles next to it. And because of how much radiation that is, using the generators for this means you generate a lot of rad bolts very quickly. Of course, depending on if you're going to utilize this for your rad bolt engines or research, a lot of the times you don't want this close by your dupes because the radiation is... AOE radius is very, very large. As you can see right here, our research reactor has a wide radius of uh, the radiation effect. And bring up the overlay, it's about 10,000 on the tile right next to it. On the very edge, though, it's around 1,000. But it gets weaker the farther away you get from the research reactor. Now, that being said, you guys may be familiar with the build with this building, how a lot of people have this submerged in steam turbines or put it in steam rooms so that the steam that's generated from the building can be utilized for heat energy. Although that's very efficient, utilizing the building as a heat source slash power source, I actually don't recommend doing that as a power source because of how scarce enriched uranium is going to be. Unless you have a lot of betas playing classic mode and have very large uranium biomes, you're going to eventually run out and then that means your Radbolt engines are not going to be able to charge as fast. So I would recommend using this sparingly and only as a source of radiation. Of course, I would also recommend only using this to charge your Radbolt engines as you have other methods for research that's going to be better utilized. Now, of course... The one thing I realize about the building is that looking at the building information on the tooltip, this building actually does not generate heat. And because of that, we were curious to see how the contents work. And apparently, you have two waste products, both in which are in liquid form. One is going to be water that gets superheated to 400 degrees, after which it gets released and goes into a falling animation, which means that until it has contact with a solid surface, it's a liquid. And as long as there's no gas present, this liquid in the falling animation will not actually interact with anything. That means that as it falls down, nothing happens until it hits the tile. Of course, if there was a gas present, that may cause the liquid to flash. But of course, there's also the second liquid, nuclear waste. Now, water at 400 degrees flashes into steam. Nuclear waste will actually stay nuclear waste. So let's see what happens with that. There actually was a drip of nuclear waste recently. As you can see, it's right there. And it gets deleted by the space vacuum. As the water animation drops for the steam, you can see that it's right there. If we do pause and put on the gas overlay, you can see the steam spread. But because it's in the space vacuum, it gets deleted. It actually does not spread too far up as the space vacuum is constantly consuming said gas. That happens for both the nuclear waste and the water. Of course, that means that we can't recycle any of the water, and I would recommend having a steady source of water to feed into it. Temperature of the water does not matter, as it will always heat up to 400 degrees, regardless of the feed and temperature. Now, that being said, you guys probably already see the cheese. By building the research reactor in the space vacuum and having the contents drip out into a space vacuum and by lining up the bottom of the tiles with insulated, the heat does not actually get into my space ice at the top and it doesn't even heat up the oxygen. Of course, this means that I could easily utilize this reactor as a way of charging my Radbolt engines relatively quickly. That being said, there are a couple of caveats. 
course, that means the design needs you to have a mesh tile in the middle of the five tiles that the research reactor is standing on. And then you're going to have to power your rad bolt generators as well. Depending on your power method, doesn't really matter. It just has to be steady, able to provide for the entire cycle, and of course, be able to turn on at will. Of course, if you just buffer the batteries, you could use something like the solar panels as well, no problem. Now, that being said, the things about the Rad Bolt generators about this build is that although they don't overheat, they generate a lot of heat on themselves. And if I bring up the heat overlay, they're going to get relatively hot. They actually will go up to a thousand, over a thousand degrees, depending on the material you have, because mines are built out of igneous. That means these are going to go up to 1400 before melting. Of course, we can't let them melt. And of course, that's going to be a problem if they do melt, as that doesn't mean... Uh, any more rad bolts are going to be coming our way. So the way of cooling I recommend is having an oxygen line. I'm using the spare oxygen I get from my spawn as uh, each spawn build is going to be in increments of eight dupes at a time. Because I have more spawns than dupes in that factor, I overproduce oxygen. So because of that, I'm utilizing that oxygen and I'm going to release that on these vents right here. Behind these four tiles right here, on both of these and the vents, we have what's called drywall. By putting drywall behind the buildings and the vents, it gives the gas a place to actually spread out to. And as the gas moves out, that's at minus 28 because of the space size temperature, it's gonna move out and it's going to start cooling down the generators. Of course, the space vacuum is going to easily consume the hot oxygen after it touches the generators. And then that's gonna be our method of cooling down the generators. Of course, we have that on a signal switch so that we could turn that on and off at will. And of course, this has a lot of leeway as you go up over a thousand degrees. And because of the way I'm charging my batteries, you do need a little bit of human micro in order to turn this on and off. And you guys can choose to automate this. I just chose to have this on an on and off switch so that I could have cooling on whenever I need it to be. Of course, that being said, the oxygen never spreads out far enough to have to interact with the steam tile that spawns after the water goes up to 400 degrees. And then the easy setup would be having the reflectors right below line that up with your rockets, have all the platforms line up so that the first rocket gets charged, if not the second, if not the third. Now, of course, a couple of things about this. I would recommend at least eight tiles from the lowest tile point for where the tile hits a solid tile. Eight tiles is what I recommend for a buffer of space vacuum. Above that, you would have space for your reflectors and your rad bolt generators to shoot. Now, couple things about this I would recommend doing is only feed your research reactor the minimum amount you need to charge your engines. It consumes about 10 kilograms over the course of a cycle of enriched uranium. Of course, you always have to feed it water unless you want to control a uh, fallout with the research reactor to get corium. I don't know why you would want to do so. So usually you want to have a constant pipeline feeding it in. Now, the only way to turn off a research reactor so that it doesn't radiate this much radiation is by not feeding it enriched uranium. So that means you have to control how much enriched uranium you decide to feed your research reactor. You could do so with a combination of sweepers and loaders so that you deliver a specific amount. However, I'm controlling this with duplicate deliveries by my uranium centrifuge. I would only make a certain amount, after which I allow access with these doors so that the dupes can deliver it after it's delivered. I disallow access so that the duplicates cannot deliver anymore. And by doing it like that, I could control how much gets delivered at any time. Depending on your method to do this, it's really up to you. You can automate that with some sweepers by disabling and enabling it. Understand that each conveyor rail packet goes up to 20 kilograms. And it's about 10 kilograms per cycle that it burns through. That being said, make sure to go in um, a above 250 grams on each delivery once the enriched uranium goes below 250 grams it auto shuts off and it will not run until it gets the next delivery of uranium but of course guys that has been the research reactor 
cheese strat in the game of oxygen not included if you guys have any questions about this build leave a comment down below hope you guys enjoyed today's video and of course guys don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys